Well, I already did the best of the year. You know what comes next. Yay. Overall, I would definitely say that 2022 was a pretty good year for film. We definitely had a lot of great movies and we definitely had a lot of surprising movies. But for every surprising and great movie, it felt like we had just as many disappointing and just awful movies to go alongside it. And a lot of these movies, I'll be honest, I think I probably wanted to forget because when I looked at my list... I forgot that these movies even existed. A good half of them, I forgot that I even saw this year, let alone that they even came out this year. And after reading through them, I feel like that was a good choice on my part. So again, I have to make a couple things perfectly clear. One, objective list. My choices are not your choices, blah, 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 blah. We all have opinions. Two, I didn't film every single review video for every single movie that you see here. A lot of them I tried to, but just for time purposes, I don't have video reviews of them on my list. But I do have them on my letterbox. I do have reviews on them on that page, and you can check out my letterbox in the description below and see reviews for them there. Also, again, I didn't see every single film this year that I, even though I tried and I feel like for the worst of the year, I feel like there's a good reason why I didn't see some of them. But still, I still saw a lot of really bad ones. And before I get into just the worst, there are dishonorable mentions that I have. Movies that are bad, are very, very bad, but still not as bad as, let's just say they could have been. Amsterdam should have been an Oscar contender. It was an amazing cast behind it. It had an amazing crew behind it. But the end product was just so devoid of tone and really just any energy behind it. And it made the entire film feel just so bland and boring. And even the story wasn't that interesting until the last third. And again, this is a two and a half hour movie. The last third is a lot to get through. A lot of people really liked Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and good for you, I'm glad you got some enjoyment out of it. For me, I thought this movie was so annoying, was rarely ever funny, and god, the fact that this is Jim Carrey's last performance just pains me to my core. Texas Chainsaw Massacre had some great cinematography. Too bad every single character was an asshole, there was no subtlety to the script whatsoever, and even though it had some creative kills, good god, it just felt like such a Halloween ripoff. Again, just like Amsterdam, Deep Water should have been amazing. It had an amazing cast, an amazing crew, but where did it all go wrong with such a messy story and such just awful characters that aren't even charming in a mean-spirited way. You hate seeing all of these characters, and you hate seeing all of these great actors in a movie that's dictated by such an awful script. The fact that Moonfall isn't on my list shocks me to my very core. I thought the movie was just bad throughout the first two-thirds of it, but by the time the last third happened and all the reveals started going on, good God, my jaw was on the floor by how awful what I was watching was. There were movies this year worse than Moonfall. There were movies this year worse than Moonfall. Let's just get it over with. <laughs>
the Jurassic Park franchise is such a roller coaster of quality that with every single installment, it's pretty much just a roll of the dice, whether it's going to be good, okay, bad, or awful. And for Jurassic World, it's been on the steady decline in terms of every single installment. The first one was okay. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I thought was awful. The fact that Dominion, in my opinion, is even worse. God damn. The story is so stupid. The villain is so stupid. Just the fact that we have all of the original cast just feels like a soulish cast grab that they have to because every single revival sequel of an old movie series feels like they have to do. Thanks, Force Awakens. But good God, Jurassic World Dominion, why did you have to be so stupid, so boring, and so, so earth-shatteringly long? <laughs> but on the other end of the spectrum, we have The Invitation, which, in all honesty, I didn't want to put on this list. Is it bad? Oh, hell yeah. But... God, I got so much enjoyment out of this film. I will admit that the first two-thirds of the movie aren't awful. They're just pretty standard and pretty boring. But like Moonfall, by the time we get to the first third and not the first third, the last third of the movie. This movie is so dumb that I'm starting to lose brain cells just remembering it. By the time that we get to the last third of the movie and all of the reveals started happening, not only was my jaw on the floor, much like Moonfall, but unlike Moonfall, I was laughing the entire way through by how stupid every single scene was. It just got stupider and stupider and stupider by the second, and good God, I love it, but is it bad? Oh, hell yeah. Why do we have to go back to the painfully bad movies like Halloween ends, especially when Everything that I said about Jurassic World Dominion is pretty much just the same as everything I hate about Halloween ends. But, good God, I hated this movie so much more, and that's probably because I love the first Halloween movie. It's, I think it was the first horror movie that really got me into horror as a genre. And just seeing just the bottom of the barrel that is Halloween ends, especially considering that this is supposedly the last film of the franchise. The entire series ends here. And the fact that they ended on a movie that barely even feels like a Halloween movie half the time, and no, not even half the time, most of the time. And then by the time that we do get to the Halloween part, you know, 10 seconds before the movie's over, it ends in the most disappointing pointingly bland, generic, happy ending, tagged on sort of way. Ugh. Halloween Ends actually put me in a bad mood the day that I saw this movie. It's that bad. I hate it so much. <laughs> Minions The Rise of Gru. People liked this movie. Why? What was so different in this movie that wasn't in the first Minions movie? Because everything I hate about that movie, I hate about this movie. It's so unfunny. It's so annoying. And good God, the only good thing that came from this movie were the memes. Just all of the kids in the theater just going to see this movie dressed up in very nice attire and then clapping alongside very politely watching the Minions movie. I actually did think that that meme was kind of funny and the fact that that slightly annoying meme I think is the best part to come out of Minions The Rise of Gru says something. <laughs> Kevin Hart can be funny. Woody Harrelson can be funny. Man from Toronto is not funny. There was not a single joke in this movie that I laughed at. Everything is just so annoying. And even though I think Kevin Hart can be funny, when he's let off the leash, he is just... He can be so annoying sometimes. And the fact that the only funny part of this entire movie happens during the credits... 
God, I can't even really say that much because I just forgot that this movie existed. Probably the minute after I saw it, I just blanked it out of my memory. It's a Netflix movie, so if you want to watch it, don't, but it's on Netflix. God, so many unfunny movies. <laughs> Halfway through, we got Redeeming Love, and again, I just completely forgot that this movie existed before having seen it on my list of letterbox movies of 2022. And then I remembered everything. I remembered how cheap this movie looked. I remember how bad the performances were. And then more importantly, I remembered how devoid of tone and self-awareness this movie was, going from very light and romantic to very harsh and gritty in just a matter of milliseconds. It was insane the fact that this movie was practically greenlit, more or less just released on a wide scale. Good God. There is a lot that I loved about Redeeming Love that was very unintentional, much like The Invitation, but again, it's so bad. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Liam Neeson, just throw in the towel on action movies. They're no longer fun. They follow the exact same formula every single time, and this is probably the worst of the bunch. The fact that the action in this movie is so bad, so quick cut, so shaky, but more to the point, the fact that most of Liam Neeson's hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes include him just slapping the bad guy. <laughs> it's, it's so ridiculously bad, and it's just so painfully, it's just... You can tell that this movie was butchered in the editing room to try to make it as close to entertaining as possible because oh, it's so bad. And this formula is so worn out. Liam Neeson, there are better roles. Stop doing these. <laughs> this year was probably the year of Pinocchio movies, which is a sentence that I never thought I would ever say, and more to the point, the fact that the Disney version is arguably the worst version, I never thought I would say that either. I have never liked the Disney live action remakes. I think every single one of them are just bland, boring, cardboard cutouts of the original, following just practically the exact same script and structure of the originals as well. And the fact that Pinocchio feels just the most like a cardboard cutout. It feels the most soulless and lifeless. The fact that when I was watching this movie at home, there was no expression on my face. I was just watching it like this. For an hour and a half, this was my expression. The fact that this is Disney! Disney, man, come on. Oh, I hate this movie so much and I needed to remember it. Uh... I didn't even really like the original Firestarter movie that much, but compared to Firestarter 2022, the original looks like Citizen Kane. This might be arguably the worst Stephen King movie I've ever seen in the fact that it's not even entertainingly bad. It's just so boring and bland. There are a lot of ideas just being thrown out throughout this movie and none of them are given the proper time to develop and because of that, the movie just feels like a whole waste, a waste of talent, a waste of time, a waste of energy, and just, good God, the ending, the climax of this movie is so bad and stupid and just, why? And then, there was one, one movie this year, that anchored me to my core more than any of the movies I've mentioned before on this list. One movie that just throughout the entire thing, I questioned 
everything. <laughs> the King's Daughter. Where do I begin with this film? Well, I think we can start off with the fact that this is, again, one of those movies that I just completely forgot about until making this list, looking at my letterbox review of it, and then everything, every single emotion just washed over me again. Every single pinnacle of hatred for this film just whoosh. The fact that so many great actors are put into this and... None of them give great performances, or even somewhat decent performances. The fact that the story is so lame, the fact that the whole film feels so cheap, the fact that the CGI and everything just looks even cheaper. It looks like something that the CW CGI would just laugh at. And more to the point, the fact that the editing in this movie is so, so just... I have the image of Pierce Brosnan as the king, along with a couple of his guards, just riding on horseback through a garden, and for some reason, it needed just God knows how many slow-mo shots and God knows how many sped-up shots for no reason. And that's just one scene in the entirety of the movie that's filled with scenes like that, and along with the soundtrack that is so generically modern that I just wanted to puke. I hated this movie. I hated it so much, and I just thank God that I never have to talk about it again, and more than likely, I will never have to talk about any of the films that I mentioned on this list ever Again, I will just forget about them as quickly as I forgot about them the first time. And for that, I am truly thankful. Well, guys, that was my top 10 worst movies of 2022. And thank God I didn't lose my voice like I thought I was going to doing all of this hatred-fueled yelling. Let me know your top 10. 10 worst movies of 2022 down in the comments below and if you don't it's okay because i didn't want to remember a lot of these movies i understand if you don't either again thank you guys so much for watching this past year you guys truly are the best and make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon down below for a whole new year of all things movie all things tv all things nerd